<sighs> it is go time, YouTube world. I am here back at the off-grid property for the final video for building this woodshed. We have bad weather coming in, and bad, I mean bad. Blow. Dude, this tree is creaking. I thought it was going to fall over on me. Sorry about that. Scared me half to death. Okay, welcome back to... Dude, that tree is freaking me out. It's making noises. Okay, focus, Justin, focus. Welcome back to the final video of building the woodshed. We've got bad weather coming through here, and I mean bad, bad. It's going to get below freezing Fahrenheit for three solid days with rain, sleet, and snow in the forecast. And let me just tell you, here in West Tennessee, the entire area will shut completely down. We are not prepared for this. We don't have salt for our roads. We don't have uh, plow trucks that will come in and clear everything, especially out here in the middle of nowhere. So I'm in a bit of a rush to get this done today. So I got to finish this up. Got to finish three other projects. So let me uh, quit yapping and let's get to work. Thanks for joining us for today's video. It's going to be awesome. The only wood that I have left to use for the roof is these pressure treated two by fours. And I wanted to make sure I had enough, so I bought one more on my way out here. And I don't know if it's just the place out here, I heard their prices had increased, or if the price of wood is crazy, but it cost me $6.04 for one treated 2 by 4 by 8 That is absolutely ridiculous. Because I'm here by myself and don't have an extra pair of hands, in order to get the board up here, I'm going to take a 2 by 4 and just screw it in there. And that will kind of give me my angle and everything, and I can just set the board right on top. And that will give me something to hold it while I tack it in on both sides. That's the idea, at least. It's amazing what you can learn when you're doing stuff by yourself and how to make things kind of work out the way you want them to work out. So, because I can only hold so much by myself, I put these two blocks into place. While I have this up here, it gives me an extra pair of hands. And then all I got to do is score it on each side. And that'll give you my angles because I want it flush on both sides. So it's always a process of learning for sure. On both picnic table area and the workshop, I did some bad math. And I am not thinking that I want to make that same mistake. This should be flush on both sides, and it is. Let's tack it in. Awesome. One down, four to go. Now just remove these and use them on the other side. Beautiful. You know, last time I was out here, I was pretty discouraged. It was like nothing was going according to plan. I told my wife that when I got home, but so far today, things are looking good. Thank you, Jesus. And you know what? If something were to go not according to plan, it's all right. 10,000 years from now, it's not going to matter at all, am I right? I'm preaching more to myself than anyone right now, I'll tell you that much. Man, I let stuff get to me. Well, I swear God's not done working on me. As soon as I said that, I redid my math across and I was off. It's actually 
the roofing panel will be flush with these and I want an overhang. So I'm going to take this piece and the one on the other side and I'm going to move it to the inside here. And that will give me uh, an inch and a half overhang on either side. So there you go. It's all good. It's all good, Justin. It's all good. Can you hear the helicopters? They're coming through for round number three. Oh, it's like right above me almost. So on my drive in, I had a military helicopter that had to have been about a thousand feet up, not high at all, fly right over my truck as I was driving in. And I think today is um, training day for uh, the National Guard. There's a base maybe like 30 or 40 miles to the east of here and uh, with the Tennessee Air National Guard. And so I'm pretty sure that's who it was. And uh, I just saw a formation of, I don't know, four or five helicopters fly by, which was really cool. And it was pretty much taking the same path as the other one. So kind of cool, fun thing to see out here in the middle of nowhere in West Tennessee. Oh man, I gotta, gotta do some math here. Yeah. Oh my God. Bullets. Okay, I'm gonna wait and not tack in the rest because every time I put 15 nails into something, I wind up having to redo it all. So let's just leave it right there. Okay, it is finally starting to come together. I've got two rafters on the side. The, I'm gonna call them Gable Inn Perlins is maybe what they're called, I can't remember. Um, and I'm going to put three rafters in place. Oh, okay. So again, this is an extra roofing piece that I have that they just gave me, which was awesome. Um, but I'm actually putting it on sideways. And so because it goes like this, it doesn't matter if it's sideways. I'm going to have plenty of uh, space to uh, drill and attach it. So that being said... I just gotta create three and knock it out. Okay. Typically you wanna use nails because they have a better strength bending sideways. They bend, screws tend to snap. However, screws pull things together. So, I'm actually gonna use a screw to pull this board closer to it. Oh. All right, I have it just kind of resting in place. My measurements were good. Got an inch and a half, two inches on either side, which is good because that's where the water is actually going to fall off. I'll show you. So as you see, it's on sideways. So the water is going to be running this way. And I have it flush with the back right now. I'm going to give just a, a hair of a gap there, but all this is pressure treated, so it's not going to really matter. But yeah. You know it's getting serious. Double drills, baby. Okay, the roof is about halfway attached, but there's so much wood behind the woodshed now that I got to take everything out and put it on the inside so that I can use my ladder on the outside to finish the roof. 
I've got wood that's a year old and I've got wood that's two months old. So I'm gonna start with the fresh wood, put it towards the back and then move the good wood to the front. And I'll just stack it up as high as I can. And then once I get done with that, I'm gonna finish the roof and call this project done. I have filled up about maybe a quarter of the way full and the back is the newest stuff that I cut down. So that's what I'll pull out last. In front of it is more of the junk wood, which is just a little bit of uh, degradation over time outside. And pretty much all I have left is the main back pile, which is the seasoned hardwood. About 95% of this is hardwood. I have maybe 10 pieces about this size that are pine. Other than that, it's mostly American sweet gum, red oak and white oak, uh, maybe a few birch or something else in there, but this is gonna make it really, really good. One of the things that I have noticed though is that I've been cutting everything about 10 or 11 inches wide. And it's important when you're stacking wood to have everything about the same size. Now, the reason why I cut it that length instead of 14 or 16 inches, which is what most people do, is because I don't know yet the size of the cabin. And without yet knowing the size of the cabin, I don't know yet the size of the wood burning uh, fireplace that I'm going to have in there. And so it's going to be pretty small because the cabin's not going to be huge. And I didn't want there to be giant pieces that I couldn't fit in there. So. But something to note that if you're wanting to do something like this, cut it all the same length and it makes stacking way easier. That is a wrap for this project. It took longer than I thought, as it always does, but came together in the end. And I guess I have it about half full, maybe a face cord. I'm not sure exactly how much I have in there, but as we get closer to the cabin build, I want this woodshed to be full and to be seasoning my wood for next winter. So winter of 2024 slash 25, that way, It'll be nice and ready to burn and we'll be great. So thanks for watching today's episode. Love you guys. I really mean that. I hit 700 subscribers today as I was driving here. I got a notification that. So super excited on the road to a thousand. I can't believe it. So ready for that. I'm grateful for each one of you. And uh, yeah, love you guys. God bless you. And remember, God's creation is meant to be explored. Explored.